Hi everyone, Chandler here, and it has been a long time since I have said that. But just because I wasn't uploading videos to my YouTube channel doesn't mean that I wasn't making content. Uh, I made TikToks, I made videos for collabs for all kinds of different people, organizations, news, media, stuff. And so I will leave some links down below in the description to those videos and stuff if you would like to check any of those things out. Um, but yeah, basically I've been gone from my own YouTube channel for a few years, taking a break while I was in university, getting my degrees. So um, because of that, I have a bunch of video ideas for the future, um, but I would also really love to know what kind of video ideas you all have, like what you want to see from me. I mean, I've been gone for years, so hopefully we can come up with some fun things for me to do for you all. This video specifically is one that I'm very, very excited for because while you are watching this, if you're watching it the day that I uploaded it, the day that I uploaded this video is my birthday. Um, and technically my five years on hormones was earlier this year, but again, I was in university and I wasn't ready to start making YouTube videos again. So my actual five year anniversary on testosterone was March 23rd of this year, 2022. Um, but I thought I really wanted to make a video for it. So here we are celebrating my birthday with me coming back to YouTube. And what better way to do that than with a fun transition related video for a really cool milestone. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to structure this video so that there are the like chapter things. I'm going to figure out how to do it. There are going to be chapters at the bottom. I wanted to start this video off by talking about my transition timeline. I also am going to be answering some of you all's questions. Um, and also you can feel free to comment more questions down below in the comments and I will go through those as well. And I also want to share some stories that maybe a little bit more squeamish. Um, again, that will be labeled. So if you don't want to hear those stories, you can just skip right past that. So without further ado, let us get into it. After not being interested in hormones for years, once I became an adult, I started going back and forth on if I wanted to start testosterone. For the most part, I was comfortable with my body. The only thing that gave me a lot of dysphoria was my really high-pitched voice. I identify as agender. I use they, them pronouns. But for the most part, I was like very indifferent towards everything, um, you know, just fine with it. Uh, but I was definitely open to different things that would have come from testosterone, such as a sharper jawline. I wasn't like against what my jawline looked like before. I was definitely open to the idea of having a sharper jawline and then also facial hair. I didn't feel dysphoric not having facial hair, but I definitely thought that it would be something that would be fun to be able to grow facial hair. For the most part though, I was just generally open to the different possibilities. I started testosterone on March 23rd of 2017 when I was 18 years old, a couple months before I turned 19. I made several transition related videos my first year on testosterone um, and also for my second year on testosterone. So all of those fun videos will be in a playlist. They will be linked down below in the description and also as like a in screen card at the end of this video. So you can go watch through those if you want so that you can actually see like I guess the in process of my transition as I'm talking about it. But there are still some stories here that I wanna share that I did not share in those previous videos. By the time I started testosterone, there had already been a shift in how it was prescribed. By the time I started my transition, I was prescribed to do intramuscular injections in my thigh every week. I was doing 0.10 milliliters a week of the 200 milligram concentration, and I was using a one and a half inch long needle. When I started my injections, I had no problem doing them. I was excited for the changes, and so that like excitement really helped me get over the weirdness. In my first month or so, my periods had stopped immediately, which was very surprising to me 
because most of the people that I heard from, their period stopped between six and eight months. I also experienced a little bit of my voice dropping, not too much, and then I also experienced a little bit of bottom growth. However, only a month in to my transition, I basically had a scare with doing my injections where my legs started convulsing and it really hurt and it spooked me. And from there I developed a needle phobia, which would haunt me for the rest of my days of my transition thus far. <sighs> so I took a couple weeks off of hormones and I contacted Planned Parenthood and I asked them if I could go to them for them to do my weekly injections. Ironically enough, after taking those two weeks off, I stopped having bottom growth and it basically never started again. Uh, in the five years that I've been transitioning, which, I mean, I personally did not want bottom growth, so I was fine with that. So then I started the process of going to the Planned Parenthood that was local in my area every week for them to do my testosterone injections for me. At first I was really, really nervous and it took me a lot of time to build myself up to even let someone else do my shots. Um, and I had never had a needle phobia before and I was always very fine with like getting vaccines and whatnot in my arm. And this went on for several months. Around my three months on testosterone, I noticed my voice had gotten a lot scratchier and deeper in being scratchier, started hurting more to talk and to sing. One day actually when I was on my three months, around three months on testosterone, my dad asked me if I was sick when I was visiting and I totally lied. I started fake coughing and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm so sick. As my voice started getting deeper, I started feeling more comfortable trying more feminine things again. I was wearing clothes that were marketed towards men almost exclusively, but I was open to um, wearing makeup again. Around four months on testosterone, I went on a trip to England for Summer in the City, where I got to meet some of you all. And during that time, I was wearing clothes marketed towards men, but I was wearing a full face of makeup every single day. And again, my voice hadn't dropped too much because I was very early on in my transition. But interestingly enough, while I was in England, every single stranger that I encountered gendered me using he, him pronouns. And that was the first time I had experienced that of like being consistently read as a man. And so that was also the very first time that I used the men's restroom. Ironically enough though, while only a few months into my transition, everybody that I encountered in England used he, him pronouns for me and saw me as a man, even wearing a full face of makeup, my whole first year on testosterone in the United States, not wearing any makeup and wearing like masculine clothing, I'm still regularly seen as a girl and strangers regularly use she, her pronouns for me all the time. Then I got a job at a gas station working in their kitchen. Now I worked this job for two whole years and I have lots of wild stories about what it was like being a person in their transition, in their early transition, and working retail. Um, so if you would like to hear any of those fun stories, I do have a boatload of them that I would love to share. For the most part though, a really common theme was that for a whole year, my whole first year on testosterone, without fail, every single day, someone would either ask me how old I was, and then tell me that they thought that I was a 15-year-old boy. And I'm like, come on, at least give me 16. This place is not paying me under the table. They would ask me that, or they would ask me flat out if I was a boy or a girl. And usually when they asked me this, I would respond in the same way, where I would just give them a little knowing look, and I would say, let's just keep it a mystery. My coworkers who started the job before I did regularly used she, her pronouns for me. Um, and then my coworkers who started after me regularly used he, him pronouns for me. For the most part, I was not out to my coworkers. I'm just not typically someone who feels super comfortable sharing my pronouns, and I definitely wasn't at that point in my life and in that type of situation since that wasn't my job that I had to go to every day. Around my five months on T, I was contacted by a team working on a show a CNN original series called This Is Life with Lisa Ling. 
and we had this really long phone call and it was so nice because we were bonding over the fact that their goals for their show and my goals for my YouTube channel both were prioritizing, like, bringing people together through education, getting people on the same page, wanting to share stories and boost narratives, and it was just so nice. So then about two weeks later, they came to where I was living and they interviewed me for about four days um, this was October-ish, September-ish of 2017. I really recommend you watch it if you haven't had a chance to. It is Season 5, Episode 3, Gender Fluidity. If you go to their website, you can see some clips from it, um, but I'm not entirely sure how to access the whole episode at this moment, but I can find that out. We filmed in the fall of 2017, and then it aired fall of 2018, one year later. The rest of my first year on testosterone was pretty much the same. My voice and my face changed quite a bit. The only other changes that I really saw was, again, stopping my period pretty immediately, uh, losing hair. And I joke because this is not my natural hair part. My natural hair part is actually on the other side. I have a cowlick about here-ish. Um, and so I was joking that my hairline from my cowlick being pushed back and my hairline from losing my hair on testosterone are now pretty evenly matched. Generally, my hair was a little bit thinner. For the most part though, it was just losing hair in this area here. I also went up on my dosage. So I started doing 0.35 milliliters every week. Um, and then I was also told that I could go down in needle size from the one and a half inch to a one inch needle which made the injections more manageable because then the needle wasn't so freaking long and intimidating for me. In going up on my testosterone dosage, I did start noticing more changes for my transition mood-wise at this point in time. Uh, I started feeling a lot more calm. I didn't feel as emotional as I felt when estrogen was the primary hormone in my body. So I felt also a lot more at peace. I would say both because of the hormones affecting my mood, and then also because in the hormones affecting my body, where I felt uncomfortable, having that discomfort diminish also brought me peace. It didn't feel like it controlled my mood, it just felt like it was one thing among many that could impact my mood a bit, if that makes sense. My second year on testosterone, however, I did start noticing more changes. I started noticing I was growing more body hair, like on my face, more so around just the sides here is where I started growing facial hair. My facial hair grew here first and then kind of followed my jawline right under. My leg hair also was now significantly darker, coarser, and filling in more. I was growing leg hair more on my inner thighs, not so much on my like outer thighs, um, near my hips and below, but lots on my inner thigh. I noticed that I started growing more body hair on my armpits and also on my forearms. So before I started testosterone, my arm hair kind of stopped here, grew around this side, it stopped here, and it was very light, like it was full, but it was like very soft hair. Um, so now you might not be able to see it because of the lighting, but I have hair that grows all the way around my arm, and then the hair on my arm itself, on my forearm on the outer side, is a lot coarser and darker than it was before. I don't, however, still grow much hair on my upper arms at all. I also started growing my hair out a little, um, by choice. My hair was curly when I was a kid, but I do think that testosterone might have made my hair a little bit more curly, um, and I've definitely since learned how to style curly hair, which I did not know when I first started growing my hair out. But before, when my hair was really short early on in my transition, it was so short that it couldn't manage to be curly because my hair is very, like, generally straight towards my head, and then it starts to get curlier farther. That's why this hair is still very straight because it just literally is too short to curl on my head. I also started getting a lot better about my needle phobia, so now it wasn't taking me so long to hype myself up for the people at Planned Parenthood to do it. 
They were still the ones doing it, but then I could start doing it in a matter of minutes. By spring of 2019, I made the decision to go back to university. And that is my first semester that I started at university. I noticed at some point by this time, my body fat had uh, redistributed around my body a little bit. So my body shape was generally straighter on the sides of my torso um, than it had been before. My shoulders had gotten broader. I'm still a pretty tiny person, so it wasn't like, obviously now you don't, it, it's not that large, but it is definitely noticeably larger than it was pre-transition. My back is also a little bit more muscular, broader. Also, just wanted to mention that my skin never really got super oily. I definitely experienced my body odor changing and my skin did get um, rougher in texture is not really what I want to say, but it's definitely not as smooth. So it's, it's like thicker, tougher feeling. And then my face is a little bit more oily, but I never experienced any sort of acne. Also in the spring of 2019, I started feeling more comfortable wearing clothing that was marketed towards women. So I started embracing um, crop tops more. I'm not really someone who enjoys wearing makeup, but every once in a while I like to wear it um, just for the look of it, but I don't particularly like the way that it feels. I had also gotten my ears pierced, so I started wearing a lot of different earrings. Uh, these look like gauges. They are fakes. They are still just the regular rods, but that's only because I like the idea of wearing a bunch of different types of earrings. I also upped my dose to 0.5 milliliters a week, which was the highest that my dose had ever been, um, and also since has ever been. And then also, in regards to my needle phobia, I had started being a little bit more brave yet again. Every once in a while, I could manage to do my shot myself, but it was definitely not consistent, and I still kept going to Planned Parenthood for them to do my shots. In fall of 2019, when I was about two and a half years on testosterone, I started dating someone who I dated for two years, and during those two years, I believe that their, their pheromones, their hormones, um, had a very large impact on my hormones. And so while I was dating them, I ended up having a period every single month that I was with them. I had not had a period for my first two and a half years on testosterone, unless on a very rare occasion where I had missed too many shots, but then starting fall of 2019, and then for two years, I had a period every single month. I don't know all the details, so I wouldn't be able to answer any questions about it, but from what it seems from the conversations that I've had with my doctors, it kind of seems like that is possible to have been something that affected me. Starting my period back up was really hard for me because I do not like having them. I don't like the experience already, just generally because I have really, really bad periods that cause me to have excruciating pain, often to the point where I am bedridden. So I was not excited about that already, but then also periods are something that cause me dysphoria, so I was also not excited for that reason. Then in 2020, Planned Parenthood closed its doors to the service that they provided for me because of COVID. I still wasn't brave enough to do my injections myself, so I was effectively off of testosterone for most of 2020. I managed to do my own shot once a month, so I was still getting testosterone, like, consistently, but it was at such a level that it was pretty low. So that just, like, really solidified my horm my, uh, hormones changing, um, and my periods really coming back in full force. I noticed that my body shape had changed a bit during 2020 from not having consistent access to testosterone. I noticed that I lost what little bit of muscle I had gained. Again, my, my body just kind of shrank a little. I can't remember exactly when, but then in either in the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021, Planned Parenthood reopened their doors for doing injections. And I knew that I really needed to start being a lot braver about doing my testosterone shots because it was so emotionally hard on me during 2020 not having access to my hormones 
that I really needed to get better about doing it myself. So I made a vow to myself that I was going to start doing my tea shots myself. And so that is exactly what I did. I started doing my shots myself, but my doctor said that she wasn't comfortable with starting me back up on the 0.5 every week since I had had such little testosterone in my body during 2020. So we decided to start instead of 0.35 and do that every week and see how I was feeling. And then after a couple months, go up to 0.5. I was doing my shots myself every week, being very brave, doing a great job, but it was still taking me a long time to do them. It took me about an hour of hyping myself up to finally be able to do my shots. Though it was taking me a while, I was at least getting better at it. So going from taking an hour to slowly but surely taking less and less time until eventually somewhere at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, I could do my shots easily within a matter of minutes. Like I would walk in, sit on the little table, do my shot within a matter of seconds, and then I would say thank you, and then I would leave. I just wanted their supervision, and then I also just really needed basically someone there to hold me accountable. I knew like if it was just me, I wasn't gonna want to feel up to doing it because it felt like such a chore to me to do. I noticed that by being consistent on hormones again, that I had started having the changes again so my body again started being straighter rather than hourglass and built up a little bit more muscle. My mood had improved where I didn't feel so emotional again. However, I did notice that I started feeling a little bit angrier. And so I asked them if we could go down. So we had gone from 0.35 up to five. So then we took it down to 0.4. And that's basically what I've been at ever since is 0.4 milliliters of the 200 milligram concentration every week. Some other changes that I noticed was that I noticed that even though I'm someone who has already my whole life been very, very flat chested, I noticed that um, my pec muscles were a little bit more defined and that I had lost some fat in my chest. So my chest was even flatter than it was before. Also at the end of 2021, I had ended the relationship that I was in um, and I noticed that I stopped having my periods again. Um, so even though I had been consistent on testosterone all of 2021, it wasn't until our relationship ended that my period went away again. <laughs> so far in 2022, I have been trying really hard to get over my needle phobia completely. Beginning-ish spring of 2022, I asked the people at Planned Parenthood if I could go there every other week. So I would go there one week, do my shot myself, and then on the other week I would try to do my shot myself in my own home. So I did that for a little while, and within the past couple months I've graduated to doing my shot myself in my own home every week. I'm not going to Planned Parenthood for my shots anymore, which is a really big deal, but I have noticed that it is hard. <laughs> um, it does still sometimes take me a lot of time to build up to do them, but just trying to keep going, trying to keep improving so that I can do it with ease. I have learned in my five years of being on testosterone that there are lots of ways that you can mess up your shot, but nothing goes wrong. Really, you're fine. Everything, the world keeps turning, you know? So I just try to keep reminding myself that whenever I'm like, God, I don't want to do it. I'm like, it's okay, it'll be over in a second. If it hurts, whatever, you'll live. So now I want to share some stories that might be a little uncomfortable for our more squeamish viewers. So again, you can look at the time bar below and just change it to the next chapter if you don't want to hear any of these stories. But I do have a few that I would love to share. One of the stories that I want to share, which I would say is the most gruesome story, is when I was still really, really scared of doing my shot myself. But one day I walked in and the nurse that they had paired me with said to me, today you're gonna do your shot yourself. And I was not prepared for that and I immediately started having an anxiety attack. And so I'm sitting in this room and I'm like, oh God, I'm not ready to do this. And she says, I'm gonna leave you alone in the room and you'll do it 
and I'll just check back up on you later and see how you're doing. And I don't know why she thought that was a good idea because I already was not expecting to do it myself, let alone to be put alone in this room without any supervision. But alas, she leaves the room and I'm having a full-blown panic attack. So I walk over to my little vial of testosterone, I put it on a table. I have two different needles that I use on my syringe. One is a drop needle, it's thicker, um, or I guess wider is the right word. And then I take that needle off and I put the injection needle on it, which is a lot thinner. I drew up the testosterone into the syringe. And then as I was trying to push the bubbles out of it, I noticed that the syringe itself was jammed. So I'm like pushing really hard. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to put this in my leg because it will, it, it's really hard to try and get it to inject even just to get the bubbles out. So it will be a nightmare to try to jam this thing in my leg. So I put the needle back into the vial and slammed on this syringe to actually unjam it to get the testosterone back into the vial. I get a different syringe, pull it up, everything's fine. I'm freaking out a little steel, but it's all right. At least this syringe is not jammed. Then I take off the first needle, I put the second needle on, and I'm holding it in my hands. So the needle is this way, syringe is this way, I'm holding it like this. And I'm trying to take the syringe cap off. And the syringe cap was jammed and it was not coming off and I had so much force trying to pull it off that when I finally got it loose, my hand flung off and slammed right back down on the needle and I stabbed through one finger into the next on my hand. And I was bleeding from one side, the other side, and then one side of this finger. And it was so incredibly fast that I honestly can't even remember if it hurt or not, but it was definitely scary. So again, I stabbed and then I pulled it right out. Um, I'm bleeding, my tip of my fingers are going purple and I'm sobbing. I mean, just absolutely having a horrible panic attack, crying, freaking out. And then the nurse comes back in and she can't really see me yet because she's kind of behind and beside me. And she just says, did you do it? And I said something along the lines of, I'm sorry for bleeding so much. I can't even remember what exactly what I said, but she starts freaking out and she's like, oh my God, are you okay? Let me clean you up. I'll get everything ready. You don't have to worry about it. If you wanna do your shot, we'll do it, whatever. Um, or you can just leave if you've had enough for today. And I was like, I just want my shot done. She's like, okay, I'll do it for you. So then she did my shot for me. And as extremely gruesome as it felt in the moment, again, I can't even remember now when it was or if it hurt. So it's like the world keeps turning, whatever. Some other stories are just fine. When I first started transitioning, the syringes where the needle attached, at first they just popped on, now they screw on. But when they popped on, if you were injecting too fast, um, it could build up too much pressure and the syringe would come off of the needle. So there were a few times that while someone was giving me my injection, they were injecting so fast, built up pressure, the syringe flew off. And so I just had the little needle stuck in my leg and I had to grab it and pull it out. All right, now that I've shared all of these fun stories, I want to answer some questions that you all sent in. So let me get my phone out. So this question from Instagram, what was the most uncomfortable thing about going on tea? I would say that for me, I am someone who regularly showers either every day or every other day. I like to smell nice. I like to feel clean. And so with testosterone making my skin a little bit more oily, not much, which has been nice, but I definitely sweat a lot more and easier for me to sweat than it was before. I didn't really sweat much at all before I started testosterone. And now it's like, I can just sit and I'll start sweating. And then also just like, because of that, it makes it easier to start smelling bad faster. Just going about a day, I've showered in the morning, it's only mid afternoon and I'm like, God, I feel so stinky. And the next question is, as a non-binary person who is still debating on tea, 
uh, what factors made you decide what all you wanted to do with your physical transition? I knew that I wanted to go on testosterone because I knew I wanted something that would make my voice considerably deeper and it was not something I could manage doing myself. I know that a lot of people have done voice training and that can be really helpful for some. For me, my voice was just really, really high pitched that it felt really uncomfortable trying to go low pitched. Um, I also really wanted to try getting facial hair. I wanted to try to get broader shoulders. Those were all things that I had fantasized about ever since I was a little kid. I knew that I didn't want top surgery because I'm already very flat chested. I like the way my chest looks um, at this point in my life. Maybe someday I'll change my mind like I did with testosterone. But for right now, I'm pretty confident that I don't want top surgery. And then I also don't want bottom surgery. I knew that I didn't want bottom growth from testosterone. Another question from Instagram is changes that happened on T that you weren't expecting. I was not expecting that around my two year mark, it felt like all of my facial hair started growing in all at once. Like I had no body hair growth and then all of a sudden I had a lot of body hair growth and then it plateaued again. And then another year or two later, I started growing even more body hair all at once and then plateaued again. And you can see I have all of this facial hair that is not even on my face. <laughs> so, um, who knows, maybe someday I'll have another random burst of body hair growth and I'll actually have some on my actual face. And then here's a question from Twitter that says, what have been your favorite parts of transitioning, like discovering a source of gender euphoria, a realization, wholesome moment, or otherwise? From experiencing the changes that I have experienced, I have felt just more at peace in my body, which has made me, in turn, feel more at peace with what my body was before I started testosterone. A really big part of my transition has been healing with the past, feeling connected to photos of me from when I was a little baby. So that has been really nice, being able to look at pictures of me when I was a little toddler and be like, oh my gosh, that's me. That little kid with the long blonde hair is me in the little cute dress, that's me. So I think just finally feeling more connected with all the parts of myself past and present has been really, really nice and has allowed me to feel more confident, more comfortable, get out of my shell a little bit more, share my personality a little bit more. And then the last question that I have is also from Twitter. It says, I saw you struggling with money for your treatment from the beginning. Any advice or comforting words on the matter? So in my transition, I do not have too many things that I have to pay for. I have to pay for the testosterone vial and the average price of it is about $140. But there is the resource GoodRx. You can get discounts for it. The most I have ever had to pay for it was $40. The least I've ever had to pay for it was $20-ish. And those are vials that last for so many weeks. I also had to pay when I first started going to Planned Parenthood for them to do my shots. Before my insurance, it was $25 a week. After my insurance, it was $5 a week. So it was $20 a month to go to Planned Parenthood to have them do my injections for me. Because I had a consistent income, even though it wasn't much, I worked at a gas station, um, it was enough for me to be able to budget out the $20 a month to go to Planned Parenthood to get my hormones. I also have to pay for my follow-up appointments with my doctor, and those happen on milestones. $75 for the follow-up appointments on my three months, my six months, my one year, and then on the year anniversaries after. Um, and then the only other thing that I have to pay for is I have to pay for my syringes. Lots of syringes, lots of needles, alcohol wipes, all in a little goodie bag and it's $10. Lasts for many, many weeks. I am very fortunate, however, that after only maybe a year, July of some year, July of 2018, Planned Parenthood that I go to decided to stop charging people who were coming in to get their injections. So I only actually had to pay the $20 a month for, I think, maybe a year. All in all, I have only had to pay that for a year, a small handful of follow-up appointments, a small handful of vials, again, because they last so long, and then the $10 needle goodie bags that, again, last a really long time. 
There are, however, lots of other resources that are available for making transition more affordable. And so I know that there are LGBTQ organizations that can help you get local deals. There's also different organizations that are on a bigger scale. I know that Git Plume is one, but there are definitely resources out there to make it more affordable. Thank you so much for your questions. Again, if you have any questions and you're watching this, you can comment them down below. I know I've said that a bajillion times already, but you can do that and I'll look through them. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot of big announcements to make, a lot more fun videos to make for you all. And then also, of course, if you have any ideas of stuff that you would like to see from me, stuff that you would like to see me do or talk about, you can comment them down below. You can also follow me on my social media. I know you hear this from every YouTuber at the end of all their videos, whatever. My Instagram, my Twitter, my TikTok, all kinds of fun things. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. All right, see you next time. Bye.